Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 16 says this. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God commanded you, that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. In the fifth commandment, God requires his people to honor their father and mother. And so, in question 127 of the Westminster Larger Catechism, asks of the fifth commandment, what are the honor, what are the honor that inferiors owe to their superiors? Now, I won't read the whole answer because Dr. Bray did that for us last week, but just the phrase that we will focus on this morning. The honor which inferiors owe to their superiors is, is all due reverence in heart, word, and behavior. And so last week, Dr. Bray covered reverence in heart. He reminded us that out of the heart flows the springs of life, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. We cannot give honor with our lips where there is none already in our hearts. So this is not honor. This is just a lie. But today, I need to remind you that honor and respect cannot simply stay in your heart either. Honor and reverence must come out of your fingertips or you do not really honor and revere. Now, reverence uh, is a word that gives many of us pause, right? We are Americans and some of us are even Texans. Uh, and we swim in a culture that kicks hard against reverence to legitimate superiors or authority. Call your boss, sir? Call your husband, Lord? You must be part of a cult. And you probably make your own toothbrushes, right? But that immodest, that immodest and immoral lady that, who's a peer of yours, slay queen, right? So we can give reverence. Just not to those whom reverence is actually due. But as Dr. Bray reminded us last week, our culture claims to be egalitarian, but they are actually very far from it. So what does it mean to give reverence uh, or to revere your superiors? How do you revere, give reverence to a sunrise or the gliding flight of a bald eagle when you actually see it with your own eyes? Or that dew-soaked spider web on an early summer morning, caught right in the sun, right? Well, one way is that you stop and you say, wow, right? And you adopt a posture of thanksgiving. Wives, when was the last time you stopped and told God how thankful you are for your husband? Look around you at the state of our men in America today, and even look at the average American evangelical husband and then say, wow, thank you, Lord. Children, when was the last time you gave your mom a big fat hug and thanked her for running your home? For all the smells and the flavors and the warmth that she brings to your life. For all the countless ways that she serves you. For teaching you how to read and write. Or when was the last time you thanked your dad for working tirelessly day after day to provide the needs, to provide for the needs for your family? Older children, especially boys, but older children, when was the last time you walked up to your dad and said, Dad, you were right, and you always are. <laughs> dad, you were right. I was wrong, and I'm so grateful for you. Men, and some of our ladies, how do you speak of your boss? And not just when the children are listening, right? How do you speak of your boss? Not just in front of your children or your coworkers, but do you give honor and reverence to your boss? Sinner though he may be. Heart, word, and behavior, according to the catechism, right? You must honor your boss with your words, and all superiors with your words, but also in behavior, it isn't just enough to honor him with your lips. It has to come out of your fingertips also. So how do you respond when your boss makes a decision that you don't agree with, within the bounds of Christian ethics, obviously? 
Is everybody at your dinner table going to hear about it for the next couple of days? Church members, when was the last time you thanked God for your elders? Remember, reverence in word and deed. Do you pray for your elders regularly? Let me just tell you, they need it. That's in bold right here. Look, they need it. Have you asked your elders how you can help serve the church? How do you talk about your elders at home or to friends outside of your local church? Word and behavior, though. Again, true reverence cannot stay at words. It must come out of your fingertips. Younger men, do you give reverence to the older men that God has placed around you? Especially the older men here at Christ Church Leavenworth. Do you find yourself wanting to call them a boomer and dismiss them way more than you want to call them and ask them for their advice? When was the last time you thanked God for giving you Such close access to men with decades of experience and wisdom. Have you asked if you could get breakfast with them to talk about that job opportunity or that girl or that big decision? There are swaths of young men in this country who do not have access to the wisdom that you have access to in this room. So to summarize, the exhortation is this. When God places a superior in your life, you are to honor them in heart, word, and deed. You should thank God often for the godly leaders that he has given you. And you should thank him even for your not-so-godly superiors when you can. You cannot honor them properly unless you honor them in your heart. But true honor can never stay in the heart only. It must be evident. Honor without works is dead. So take stock of your superiors. Give reverence to even the average ones. But where God has given you good and godly superiors, everybody around you should be able to see your gratitude and your reverence. Amen? Well, because we often grumble, grumble about and find fault with even the godliest of superiors, We are reminded of the need to confess our sins regularly. And so if you are able, please kneel with us as we confess our sins silently. And then we will do so corporately using the prayer found in the bulletin.